Introduction for Electra. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Electra by Euripides. Translated by Gilbert Murray, 1866 to 1957. Introduction. The Electra of Euripides has the distinction of being perhaps the best abused and, one might add, not the best understood of ancient tragedies, a singular monument of poetical or rather unpoetical perversity, the very worst of all his pieces, are for instance the phrases applied to it by Schlegel. Considering that he judged it by the standards of conventional classicism, he could scarcely have arrived at any different conclusion for it is essentially and perhaps consciously a protest against those standards so indeed is the tragedy of the trojan women but on very different lines the electra has none of the imaginative splendour the vastness the intense poetry of that wonderful work it is a close-knit powerful well-constructed play as realistic as the tragic conventions will allow intellectual and rebellious its psychology reminds one of browning or even of ibsen to a fifth century greek all history came in the form of legend and no less than three extant tragedies aeschylus libation bearers four fifty six b c euripides electra four thirteen b c and sophocles electra date unknown but perhaps the latest of the three are based on the particular piece of legend or history now before us it narrates how the son and daughter of the murdered king agamemnon slew in due course of revenge and by apollo's express command their guilty mother and her paramour homer had long since told the story as he tells so many simply and grandly without moral questioning and without intensity the atmosphere is heroic it is all a blood feud between chieftains in which orestes after seven years succeeds in slaying his foe aegisthus who has killed his father he probably killed his mother also but we are not directly told so his sister may have helped him and he may possibly have gone mad afterwards but these painful issues are kept determinedly in the shade somewhat surprisingly sophocles although by his time electra and clytemnestra had become leading figures in the story and the mother murder its essential climax preserves a very similar atmosphere his tragedy is enthusiastically praised by schlegel for the celestial purity the fresh breath of life and youth that is diffused over so dreadful a subject everything dark and ominous is avoided orestes enjoys the fullness of health and strength he is beset neither with doubts nor stings of conscience especially laudable is the austerity with which aegisthus is driven into the house to receive according to schlegel a specially ignominious death this combination of matricide and good spirits however satisfactory to the determined classicist will probably strike most intelligent readers as a little curious and even if one may use the word at all in connection with so powerful a play undramatic it becomes intelligible as soon as we observe that sophocles was deliberately seeking what he regarded as an archaic or homeric style compare jeb introduction page forty one and this archaism in its turn seems to me best explained as a conscious reaction against euripides searching and unconventional treatment of the same subject compare Vilamovitz and hermes eighteen pages two fourteen and following in the result sophocles is not only more classical than euripides he is more primitive by far than aeschylus for aeschylus though steeped in the glory of the world of legend would not lightly accept its judgment upon religious and moral questions and above all would not in that region play at make-believe he would not elude the horror of this story by simply not mentioning it like homer or by pretending that an evil act was a good one like sophocles he faces the horror realizes it and tries to surmount it on the sweep of a great wave of religious emotion the mother murder even if done by a god's command is a sin 
a sin to be expiated by unfathomable suffering yet since the god cannot have commanded evil it is a duty also it is a sin that must be committed euripides here as often represents intellectually the thought of aeschylus carried a step further he faced the problem just as aeschylus did and as sophocles did not but the solution offered by aeschylus did not satisfy him it cannot in its actual details satisfy any one to him the mother murder like most acts of revenge but more than most was a sin and a horror therefore it should not have been committed and the god who enjoined it did command evil as he had done in a hundred other cases he is no god of light he is only a demon of old superstition acting among other influences upon a sore beset man and driving him towards a miscalled duty the horror of which when done will unseat his reason but another problem interests euripides even more than this what kind of man was it above all what kind of woman can it have been who would do this deed of mother murder not in sudden fury but deliberately as an act of justice after many years a sympathetic hero and heroine are out of the question and euripides does not deal in stage villains he seeks real people and few attentive readers of this play can doubt that he has found them the sun is an exile bred in the desperate hopes and wild schemes of exile he is a prince without a kingdom always dreaming of his wrongs and his restoration and driven by the old savage doctrine which an oracle has confirmed of the duty and manliness of revenge he is as was shown by his later history a man subject to overpowering impulses and to fits of willless brooding lastly he is very young and is swept away by his sister's intenser nature that sister is the central figure of the tragedy a woman shattered in childhood by the shock of an experience too terrible for a girl to bear a poisoned and a haunted woman eating her heart in ceaseless broodings of hate and love alike unsatisfied hate against her mother and stepfather love for her dead father and her brother in exile a woman who has known luxury and state and cares much for them who is intolerant of poverty and who feels her youth passing away in meantime there is her name on which all legend if i am not mistaken insists she is a lectra the unmated there is perhaps no woman's character in the range of greek tragedy so profoundly studied not aeschylus's clytemnestra not phaedra nor medea one's thoughts can only wander towards two great heroines of lost plays althea in the meleager and stenabia in the bellerophon g m characters in the play clytemnestra queen of argos and mycenae widow of agamemnon electra daughter of agamemnon and clytemnestra orestes son of agamemnon and clytemnestra now in banishment a peasant husband of electra an old man formerly servant to agamemnon pylades son of strophios king of phocis friend to orestes aegisthos usurping king of argos and mycenae now husband of clytemnestra the heroes castor and polydeuces chorus of argive women with their leader followers of orestes handmaids of clytemnestra the scene is laid in the mountains of argos the play was first produced between the years 414 and 412 bc end of introduction Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. One of Electra by Euripides, translated by Gilbert Murray, eighteen sixty six to nineteen fifty seven. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part one. The scene represents a hut on a desolate mountainside the river enicus is visible in the distance the time is the dusk of early dawn before sunrise the peasant is discovered in front of the hut peasant old gleam on the face of the world i give thee hail 
river of argos land where sail on sail the long ships met a thousand near and far when agamemnon walked the seas in war who smote king priam in the dust and burned the storied streets of ilion and returned above all conquerors heaping tower and fane of argos high with spoils of eastern slain so in far lands he prospered and at home his own wife trapped and slew him twas the doom aegisthus wrought son of his father's foe gone is that king and the old spear laid low that tantalus wielded when the world was young aegisthus hath his queen and reigns among his people and the children here alone orestes and electra buds unblown of men and womanhood when forth to troy he shook his sail and left them lo the boy orestes ere aegisthus hand could fall was stolen from argos borne by one old thrall who served his father's boyhood overseas far off and laid upon king strophius knees in focus for the old king's sake but here the maid electra waited year by year alone till the warm days of womanhood drew nigh and suitors came of gentle blood in hellas then aegisthus was in fear lest she be wed in some great house and bear a son to avenge her father close he wrought her prison in his house and gave her not to any wooer then since even this was full of peril and the secret kiss of some bold prince might find her yet and rend her prison walls aegisthus at the end would slay her then her mother she so wild aforetime pled with him and saved her child her heart had still an answer for her lord murdered but if the child's blood spoke what word could meet the hate thereof after that day aegisthus thus decreed whoso should slay the old king's wandering son should win rich mead of gold and for electra she must wed with me not base of blood in that i stand true mycenaean but in gold and land most poor which maketh highest birth as naught so from a powerless husband shall be wrought a powerless peril had some man of might possessed her he had called perchance to light her father's blood and unknown vengeance is risen on aegisthus yet ay mine she is but never yet these arms the cyprian knows my truth have clasped her body and she goes a virgin still myself would hold it shame to a basest daughter of a royal name i am too lowly to love violence yes orestes too doth move me far away mine unknown brother will he ever now come back and see his sister bowed so low doth any deem me fool to hold a fair maid in my room and seek no joy but spare her maidenhood if any such there be let him but look within the fool is he in gentle things weighing the more and less of love by his own heart's untenderness as he ceases electra comes out of the hut she is in mourning garb and carries a large pitcher on her head she speaks without observing the peasant's presence electra dark shepherdess of many a golden star dost see me mother night and how this jar hath worn my earth-bowed head as forth and fro for water to the hillward springs i go not for mere stress of need but purpose set that never day nor night god may forget aegisthus sin ay and perchance a cry cast forth to the waste shining of the sky may find my father's ear the woman bred of tyndareus my mother on her head be curses from my house hath outcast me she hath borne children to our enemy she hath made me naught she hath made orestes naught as the bitterness of her tone increases the peasant comes forward peasant what wouldst thou now my sad one ever fraught with toil to lighten my toil and so soft thy nurture was have i not chid thee oft and thou wilt cease not serving without end electra turning to him with impulsive affection o oh, friend my friend as god might be my friend thou only hast not trampled on my tears life scarce can be so hard mid many fears and many shames when mortal heart can find somewhere one healing touch as my sick mind finds thee 
and should i wait thy word to endure a little for thine easing yea or pour my strength out in thy toiling fellowship thou hast enough with fields and kind to keep tis mine to make all bright within the door tis joy to him that toils when toil is o'er to find home waiting full of happy things peasant if so it please thee go thy way the springs are not far off and i before the morn must drive my team afield and sow the corn in the hollows not a thousand prayers can gain a man's bare bread save an he work amain electra and the peasant depart on their several ways after a few moments there enter stealthily two armed men orestes and pylades orestes thou art the first that i have known indeed true and my friend and shelterer of my need thou only pylades of all that knew hast held orestes of some worth all through these years of helplessness wherein i lie down trodden by the murderer yea and by the murderess my mother i am come fresh from the cleansing of apollo home to argos and my coming no man yet knoweth to pay the bloody twain their debt of blood this very night i crept alone to my dead father's grave and poured thereon my heart's first tears and tresses of my head new-shorn and o'er the barrow of the dead slew a black lamb unknown of them that reign in this unhappy land i am not fain to pass the city gates but hold me here hard on the borders so my road is clear to fly if men look close and watch my way if not to seek my sister for men say she dwelleth in these hills no more a maid but wedded i must find her house for aid to guide our work and learn what hath betid of late in argos ah the radiant lid of dawn's eye lifteth come friend leave we now this trodden path some worker of the plough or serving damsel at her early task will presently come by whom we may ask if here my sister dwells but soft even now i see some bondmaid there her death-shorn brow bending beneath its freight of well-water lie close until she pass then question her a slave might help us well or speak some sign of import to this work of mine and thine the two men retire into ambush electra enters returning from the well electra onward o labouring tread as on move the years onward amid thy tears o happier dead let me remember i am she agamemnon's child and the mother of me clytemnestra the evil queen helen's sister and folk i ween that pass in the streets call yet my name electra god protect my shame for toil toil is a weary thing and life is heavy about my head and thou far off o father and king in the lost lands of the dead a bloody twain made these things be one was thy bitterest enemy and one the wife that lay by thee brother brother on some far shore hast thou a city is there a door that knows thy footfall wandering one who left me left me when all our pain was bitter about us a father slain and a girl that wept in her room alone thou couldst break me this bondage sore only thou who art far away loose our father and wake once more zeus zeus dost hear me pray the sleeping blood and the shame and the doom o feet that rest not over the foam of distant seas come home come home what boots this cruise that i carry o oh, set free my brow for the gathered tears that tarry through the day and the dark till now now in the dawn are free father and flow beneath the floor of the world to be as a song in the house of death from the rising up of the day they guide my heart alway the silent tears unshed and my body mourns for the dead my cheeks bleed silently and these bruised temples keep their pain remembering thee and thy bloody sleep be rent o hair of mine head as a swan crying alone where the river windeth cold for a love for a silent one whom the toils of the fowler hold i cry father to thee o slain in misery the water the wan water lapped him and his head drooped in the bed of slaughter low as one wearied 
woe for the edged axe and woe for the heart of hate hound-like about thy tracks o conqueror desolate from troy over land and sea till a wife stood waiting thee not with crowns did she stand nor flowers of peace in her hand with aegisthus dagger drawn for her hire she strove through shame and through blood alone and won her a traitor's love as she ceases there enter from right and left the chorus consisting of women of argos young and old in festal dress chorus some women child of the mighty dead electra lo my way to thee in the dawn hath sped and the cot on the mountain grey for the watcher hath cried this day he of the ancient folk the walker of waste and hill who drinketh the milk of the flock and he told of hera's will for the morrow's morrow now they cry her festival and before her throne shall bow our damsels all electra not unto joy nor sweet music nor shining of gold the wings of my spirit beat let the brides of argos hold their dance in the night as of old i lead no dance i mark no beat as the dancers sway with tears i dwell in the dark and my thought is of tears alway to the going down of the day look on my wasted hair and raiment this that i bear is it meet for the king my sire and her whom the king begot for troy that was burned with fire and forgetteth not chorus other women hera is great ah come be kind and my hand shall bring fair raiment work of the loom and many a golden thing for joyous robe wearing deemest thou this thy woe shall rise unto god as prayer or bend thine haters low doth god for thy pain have care not tears for the dead nor sighs but worship and joy divine shall win thee peace in thy skies o daughter mine electra no care cometh to god for the voice of the helpless none for the crying of ancient blood alas for him that is gone and for thee o wandering one that now methinks in a land of the stranger must toil for hire and stand where the poor men stand a cold by another's fire o son of the mighty sire while i in a beggar's cot on the wrecked hills changing not starve in my soul for food but our mother lieth wed in another's arms and blood is about her bed leader on all of greece she wrought great jeopardy thy mother's sister helen and on thee orestes and pylades move out from their concealment orestes comes forward pylades beckons to two armed servants and stays with them in the background electra woe's me no more of wailing women flee strange armed men beside the dwelling there lie ambushed they are rising from their lair back by the road all you i will essay the house and may our good feet save us orestes between electra and the hut stay unhappy woman never fear my steel electra in utter panic o bright apollo mercy see i kneel slay me not orestes others i have yet to slay less dear than thou electra go from me wouldst thou lay hand on a body that is not for thee orestes none is there i would touch more righteously electra why lurkst thou by my house and why a sword orestes stay listen thou wilt not gainsay my word electra there i am still do what thou wilt with me thou art too strong orestes a word i bear to thee word of thy brother electra o oh, friend more than friend living or dead orestes he lives so let me send my comfort foremost ere the rest be heard electra god love thee for the sweetness of thy word orestes god love the twain of us both thee and me electra he lives poor brother in what land weareth he his exile orestes not one region nor one lot his wasted life hath trod electra he lacketh not for bread orestes bread hath he but a man is weak in exile electra what charge laid he on thee speak orestes to learn if thou still live and how the storm living hath struck thee electra that thou seest 
this form wasted orestes yes riven with the fire of woe i sigh to look on thee electra my face and lo my temples of their ancient glory shorn orestes methinks thy brother haunts thee being forlorn ay and perchance thy father whom they slew electra what should be nearer to me than those two orestes and what to him thy brother half so dear as thou electra his is a distant love not near at need orestes but why this dwelling place this life of loneliness electra with sudden bitterness stranger i am a wife o oh, better dead orestes that seals thy brother's doom what prince of argos electra not the man to whom my father thought to give me orestes speak that i may tell thy brother all electra tis there hard by his dwelling where i live far from men's eyes orestes some ditcher's cot or cowherd's by its guise electra struck with shame for her ingratitude a poor man but true-hearted and to me god-fearing orestes how what fear of god hath he electra he hath never held my body to his own orestes hath he some vow to keep or is it done to scorn thee electra nay he only scorns to sin against my father's greatness orestes but to win a princess doth his heart not leap for pride electra he honoureth not the hand that gave the bride orestes i see he trembles for orestes wrath electra ay that would move him but beside he hath a gentle heart orestes strange a good man i swear he well shall be requited electra whensoe'er our wanderer comes again orestes thy mother stays unmoved mid all thy wrong electra a lover weighs more than a child in any woman's heart orestes but what end seeks aegisthus by such art of shame electra to make mine unborn children low and weak even as my husband orestes lest there grow from thee the avenger electra such his purpose is for which may i requite him orestes and of this thy virgin life i guess thus knows it electra nay we speak it not it cometh not his way orestes these women hear us are they friends to thee electra ay friends and true they will keep faithfully all words of mine and thine orestes trying her thou art well stayed with friends and could orestes give thee aid in aught if e'er electra shame on thee seest thou not is it not time orestes catching her excitement how time and if he sought to slay how should he come at his desire electra by daring as they dared who slew his sire orestes wouldst thou dare with him if he came thou too to slay her electra yes with the same axe that slew my father orestes tis thy message and thy mood unchanging electra let me shed my mother's blood and i die happy orestes god i would that now orestes heard thee here electra yet wottest thou though here i saw him i should know him not orestes surely ye both were children when they wrought your parting electra one alone in all this land would know his face orestes the thrall methinks whose hand stole him from death or so the story ran electra he taught my father too an old old man of other days than these orestes thy father's grave he had due rites and tendants electra what chance gave my father had cast out to rot in the sun orestes god tis too much to hear of such things done even to a stranger stings a man but speak tell of thy life that i may know and seek thy brother with a tale that must be heard howe'er it sicken if mine eyes be blurred remember tis the fool that feels not ay wisdom is full of pity and thereby men pay for too much wisdom with much pain leader 
my heart is moved as this man's i would fain learn all thy tale here dwelling on the hills little i know of argos and its ills electra if i must speak and at love's call god knows i fear not i will tell thee all my woes my father's woes and oh since thou hast stirred the storm of speech thou bear him this my word his woes and shame tell of this narrow cloak in the wind this grime and reek of toil that choke my breathing this low roof that bows my head after a king's this raiment thread by thread tis i must weave it or go bare must bring myself each jar of water from the spring no holy day for me no festival no dance upon the green from all from all i am cut off no portion hath my life mid wives of argos being no true wife no portion where the maidens throng to praise castor my castor whom in ancient days ere he passed from us and men worshipped him they named my bridegroom and she she the grim troy spoils gleam round her throne and by each hand queens of the east my father's prisoners stand a cloud of orient webs and tangling gold and there upon the floor the blood the old black blood yet crawls and cankers like a rot in the stone and on our father's chariot the murderer's foot stands glorying and the red false hand uplifts that ancient staff that led the armies of the world i tell him how the grave of agamemnon even now lacketh the common honour of the dead a desert barrow where no tears are shed no tresses hung no gift no myrtle spray and when the wine is in him so men say our mother's mighty master leaps thereon spurning the slab or pelteth stone on stone flouting the lone dead and the twain that live where is thy son orestes doth he give thy tomb good tendance or is all forgot so is he scorned because he cometh not o stranger on my knees i charge thee tell this tale not mine but of dumb wrongs that swell crowding and i the trumpet of their pain this tongue these arms this bitter burning brain these dead shorn locks and he for whom they died his father slew troy's thousands in their pride he hath but one to kill o oh god but one is he a man and agamemnon's son leader but hold is this thy husband from the plain his labour ended hasting home again enter the peasant peasant ha ah, who be these strange men in arms before my house what would they at this lonely door seek they for me strange gallants should not stay a woman's goings electra friend and helper nay think not of any evil these men be friends of orestes charged with words for me strangers forgive his speech peasant what word have they of him at least he lives and sees the day electra so fares their tale and sure i doubt it not peasant and ye two still are living in his thought thou and his father electra in his dreams we live an exile hath small power peasant and did he give some privy message electra none they come as spies for news of me peasant thine outward news their eyes can see the rest methinks thyself will tell electra they have seen all heard all i trust them well peasant why were our doors not open long ago be welcome strangers both and pass below my lintel in return for your glad words be sure all greeting that mine house affords is yours ye followers bear in their gear gainsay me not for his sake are ye dear that sent you to our house and though my part in life be low i am no churl at heart the peasant goes to the armed servants at the back to help them with the baggage orestes aside to electra is this the man that shields thy maidenhood unknown and will not wrong thy father's blood electra he is called my husband tis for him i toil orestes how dark lies honour hid and what turmoil in all things human sons of mighty men fallen to naught and from ill seed again good fruit yea famine in the rich man's scroll writ deep and in poor flesh a lordly soul as lo this man not great in argos 
not with pride of house uplifted in a lot of unmarked life hath shown a prince's grace to the peasant who has returned all that is here of agamemnon's race and all that lacketh yet for whom we come do thank thee and the welcome of thy home accept with gladness ho men hasten ye within this open-hearted poverty is blither to my sense than feasts of gold lady thine husband's welcome makes me bold yet would thou hadst thy brother before all confessed to greet us in a prince's hall which may be even yet apollo spake the word and surely though small store i make of man's divining god will fail us not orestes and pylades go in following the servants leader oh never was the heart of hope so hot within me how so moveless in time past hath fortune girded up her loins at last electra now know'st thou not thine own ill furniture to bid these strangers in to whom for sure our best were hardship men of gentle breed peasant nay if the men be gentle as indeed i deem them they will take good cheer or ill with even kindness electra twas ill done but still go since so poor thou art to that old friend who reared my father at the realm's last end he dwells where Tenaeus river foams between argos and sparta long time hath he been in exile mid his flocks tell him what thing hath chanced on me and bid him haste and bring meat for the stranger's tending glad i trow that old man's heart will be and many a vow will lift to god to learn the child he stole from death yet breathes i will not ask a dole from home how should my mother help me nay i pity him that seeks that door to say orestes liveth peasant wilt thou have it so i will take word to the old man but go quickly within and whatso there you find set out for them a woman if her mind so turn can light on many a pleasant thing to fill her board and surely plenishing we have for this one day tis in such shifts as these i care for riches to make gifts to friends or lead a sick man back to health with ease and plenty else small aid is wealth for daily gladness once a man be done with hunger rich and poor are all as one the peasant goes off to the left electra goes into the house chorus oh for the ships of troy the beat of oars that shimmered innumerable and dancing feet of nereids glimmered and dolphins drunken with the lyre across the dark blue prows like fire did bound and quiver to cleave the way for thetis son fleet in the wind achilles on to war to war till troy be won beside the reedy sea up from euboea's caverns came the nereids bearing gold armour from the lords of flame wrought for his wearing long sought those daughters of the deep up pelion's glen up ossa's steep forest enchanted where peleus reared alone afar his lost sea maiden's child the star of hellas and swift help of war when weary armies panted there came a man from troy and told here in the haven how orb on orb to strike with cold the trojan or that tarage of gold dread shapes were graven all round the level rim thereof perseus on winged feet above the long seas hide him the gorgon's wild and bleeding hair he lifted and a herald fair he of the wilds whom maia bare god's hermes flew beside him but midmost where the boss rose higher a sun stood blazing and winged steeds and stars in choir hyad and pleiad fire on fire for hector's dazing across the golden helm each way two taloned sphinxes hold their prey song drawn to slaughter and round the breastplate ramping came a mingled breed of lion and flame hot-eyed to tear that steed of fame that found pyrene's water the red red sword with steeds four yoked black maned was graven that laboured and the hot dust smoked cloudwise to heaven thou tindarid woman fair and tall those warriors were and o'er them all one king great-hearted whom thou and thy false love did slay therefore the tribes of heaven one day for these thy dead shall send on thee an iron death yea men shall see the white throat drawn and blood's red spray and lips in terror parted as they cease there enters from the left a very old man 
bearing a lamb, a wineskin, and a wallet. End of part one. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. of electra by euripides translated by gilbert murray eighteen sixty six to nineteen fifty seven this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two old man where is my little princess ah not now but still my queen who tended long ago the lad that was her father how steep sat these last steps to her porch but faint not yet onward ye failing knees and back with pain bowed till we look on that dear face again enter electra ah daughter is it thou lo here i am with gifts from all my store this suckling lamb fresh from the yew green crowns for joyfulness and creamy things new curdled from the press and this long storage juice of vintages forgotten cased in fragrance scant it is but passing sweet to mingle nectar wise with feebler wine go bear them in mine eyes where is my cloak they are all blurred with tears electra what ails thine eyes old friend after these years doth my low plight still stir thy memories or think'st thou of orestes where he lies in exile and my father i long love thou gavest him and seest the fruit thereof wasted for thee and all who love thee old man all wasted and yet tis that lost hope withal i cannot brook but now i turned aside to see my master's grave all far and wide was silence so i bent these knees of mine and wept and poured drink offerings from the wine i bear the strangers and about the stone laid myrtle sprays and child i saw thereon just at the censer slain a fleeced ewe deep black in sacrifice the blood was new about it and a tress of bright brown hair shorn as in mourning close long stood i there and wondered of all men what man had gone in mourning to that grave my child tis none in argos did there come nay mark me now thy brother in the dark last night to bow his head before that unadored tomb o oh, come and mark the colour of it come and lay thine own hair by that mourner's tress a hundred little things make likenesses in brethren born and show the father's blood electra trying to mask her excitement and resist the contagion of his old heart old heart is this a wise man's mood oh not in darkness not in fear of men shall argos find him when he comes again mine own undaunted nay and if it were what likeness could there be my brother's hair is as a prince's and a rover's strong with sunlight and with strife not like the long locks that a woman combs and many a head hath this same semblance wing for wing though bred of blood not ours tis hopeless peace old man old man the footprints set thy foot by his and scan the track of frame and muscles how they fit electra that ground will take no footprint all of it is bitter stone it hath and who hath said there should be likeness in a brother's tread and sisters his is stronger every way old man but hast thou nothing if he came this day and sought to show thee is there no one sign whereby to know him stay the robe was thine work of thy loom wherein i wrapped him o'er that night and stole him through the murderer's door electra thou knowest when orestes was cast out i was a child if i did weave some clout of raiment would he keep the vesture now he wore in childhood should my weaving grow as his limbs grew tis lost long since no more oh either twas some stranger passed and shore his locks for very ruth before that tomb or if he found perchance to seek his home some spy old man the strangers where are they i fain would see them ay and bid them answer plain electra here at the door how swift upon the thought enter orestes and pylades old man high-born albeit for that i trust them not 
the highest oft are false howe'er it be approaching them i bid the strangers hail orestes all hail to thee greybeard prithee what man of all the king trusted of old is now this broken thing electra tis he that trained my father's boyhood orestes how and stole from death thy brother sayest thou electra this man was his deliverer if it be deliverance orestes how his old eye pierceth me as one that testeth silver and alloy sees he some likeness here electra perchance tis joy to see orestes comrade that he feels orestes none dearer but what ails the man he reels dizzily back electra i marvel i can say no more old man in a broken voice electra mistress daughter pray pray unto god electra of all the things i crave the thousand things are all that others have what should i pray for old man pray thine arms may hold at last this treasure dream of more than gold god shows us electra god i pray thee wouldst thou more old man gaze now upon this man and bow before thy dearest upon earth electra i gaze on thee o oh, hath time made thee mad old man mad that i see thy brother electra my i know not what thou sayest i look not for it old man i tell thee here confess standeth orestes agamemnon's son electra a sign before i trust thee o oh, but one how dost thou know old man there by his brow i see the scar he made that day he ran with thee chasing thy fawn and fell electra in a dull voice a scar tis so i see a scar old man and fearest still to throw thine arms round him thou lovest electra oh no more thy sign hath conquered me throwing herself into orestes arms at last at last thy face like light and do i hold thee fast unhoped for orestes yea at last and i hold thee electra i never knew orestes i dream not electra is it he orestes orestes thy defender yea alone to fight the world lo this day have i thrown a net which once unbroken from the sea drawn home shall oh and it must surely be else men shall know there is no god no light in heaven if wrong to the end shall conquer right chorus comest thou comest thou now chained by the years and slow o day long sought a light on the mountains cold is lit yea a fire burneth tis the light of one that turneth from roaming's manifold back out of exile old to the house that knew him not some spirit hath turned our way victory visible walking at thy right hand beloved o oh, lift this day thine arms thy voice as a spell and pray for thy brother pray threading the perilous land that all be well orestes enough this dear delight is mine at last of thine embracing and the hour comes fast when we shall stand again as now we stand and stint not stay old man thou being at hand at the edge of time advise me by what way best to requite my father's murderers say have i in argos any still to trust or is the love once borne me trod in dust even as my fortunes are whom shall i seek by day or night and whither turn to wreak my will on them that hate us say old man my son in thine adversity there is not one will call thee friend nay that were treasure trove a friend to share not faltering from love fair days and foul the same thy name is gone forth to all argos as a thing o'erthrown and dead thou hast not left one spark to glow with hope in one friend's heart hear all and know thou hast god's fortune in thine own right hand naught else to conquer back thy fatherland orestes the deed the deed what must we do old man strike down aegisthus and thy mother orestes tis the crown my race is run for but how find him old man not within the city walls however hot thy spirit orestes 
ha with watchers doth he go begirt and mailed pikemen old man even so he lives in fear of thee and night nor day hath slumber orestes that way blocked tis thine to say what next remains old man i will and thou give ear a thought has found me orestes all good thoughts be near for thee to speak and me to understand old man but now i saw aegisthus close at hand and here i journeyed orestes that good word shall trace my path for me thou sawst him in what place old man out on the pastures where his horses stray orestes what did he there so far a gleam of day crosseth our darkness old man twas a feast methought of worship to the wildwood nymphs he brought orestes the watchers of men's birth is there a son new-born to him or doth he pray for one that cometh movement of electra old man more i know not he had there a wreathed ox as for some weighty prayer orestes what force was with him not his serfs alone old man no argive lord was there none but his own household orestes not any that ought know my face or guess old man thralls thralls who ne'er have seen thy face orestes once i prevail the thralls will welcome me old man the slaves weigh that and no ill thing for thee orestes how can i once come near him old man walk thy ways hard by where he may see thee ere he slays his sacrifice orestes how is the road so nigh old man he cannot choose but see thee passing by and bid thee stay to share the beasts they kill orestes a bitter fellow feaster if god will old man and then then swift be heart and brain to see god's chances orestes ay well hast thou counselled me but where is she old man in argos now i guess but goes to join her husband ere the press of the feast orestes why goeth not my mother straight forth at her husband's side old man she fain will wait until the gathered country folk be gone orestes enough she knows what eyes are turned upon her passings in the land old man ay all men hate the unholy woman orestes how then can i set my snare for wife and husband in one breath electra coming forward hold it is i must work our mother's death orestes if that be done i think the other deed fortune will guide electra this man must help our need one friend alone for both old man he will he will speak on what cunning hast thou found to fill thy purpose electra get thee forth old man and quick tell clytemnestra tell her i lie sick new mothered of a man-child old man thou hast borne a son but when electra let this be the tenth morn till then a mother stays in sanctity unseen old man and if i tell her where shall be the death in this electra that word let her but hear straight she will seek me out old man the queen what care hath she for thee or pain of thine electra she will and weep my babe's low station old man thou hast skill to know her child say on electra but bring her here here to my hand the rest will come old man i swear here at the gate she shall stand palpable electra the gate the gate that leads to me and hell old man let me but see it and i die content electra first then my brother see his steps be bent old man straight yonder where aegisthus makes his prayer electra then seek my mother's presence and declare my news old man thy very words child as though spoke from thine own lips electra brother thine hour is struck thou standest in the van of war this day orestes rousing himself ay i am ready i will go my way if but some man will guide me old man here am i to speed thee to the end right thankfully orestes 
turning as he goes and raising his hands to heaven zeus of my sires zeus of the lost battle electra have pity have pity we have earned it well old man pity these twain of thine own body sprung electra o queen or argive altars hera high orestes grant us thy strength if for the right we cry old man strength to these twain to right their father's wrong electra o earth deep earth to whom i yearn in vain orestes and deeper thou o father darkly slain old man thy children call who love thee hearken thou orestes girt with thine own dead armies wake o wake electra with all that died at ilion for thy sake old man and hate earth's dark defilers help us now electra dost hear us yet o thou in deadly wrong wronged by my mother old man child we stay too long he hears be sure he hears electra and while he hears i speak this word for omen in his ears aegisthus dies aegisthus dies ah me my brother should it strike not him but thee this wrestling with dark death behold i too am dead that hour think of me as one true not one that lives i have a sword made keen for this and shall strike deep i will go in and make all ready if there come from thee good tidings all my house for ecstasy shall cry and if we hear that thou art dead then comes the other end lo i have said orestes i know all all electra then be a man to-day orestes and the old man depart o women let your voices from this fray flash me a fiery signal where i sit the sword across my knees expecting it for never though they kill me shall they touch my living limbs i know my way thus much she goes into the house chorus when white-haired folk are met in argos about the fold a story lingereth yet a voice of the mountains old that tells of the lamb of gold a lamb from a mother mild but the gold of it curled and beat and pan who holdeth the keys of the wild bore it to atreus feet his wild reed pipes he blew and the reeds were filled with peace and a joy of singing before him flew over the fiery fleece and up on the basid rock as a herald cries cried he gather ye gather o argive folk the king's sign to see the sign of the blessed of god for he that hath this hath all therefore the dance of praise they trod in the atreid brethren's hall they opened before men's eyes that which was hid before the chambers of sacrifice the dark of the golden door and fires on the altar floor and bright was every street and the voice of the muses tree the carven lotus was lifted sweet when afar and suddenly strange songs and a voice that grew come to your king ye folk mine mine is the golden you twas dark thyestes spoke for lo when the world was still with his brother's bride he lay and won her to work his will and they stole the lamb away then forth to the folk strode he and called them about his fold and showed that sign of the king to be the fleece and the horns of gold then then the world was changed and the father where they ranged shook the golden stars and glowing and the great sun stood deranged in the glory of his going lo from that day forth the east bears the sunrise on his breast and the flaming day in heaven down the dim ways of the west driveth to be lost at even the wet clouds to northward beat and lord ammon's desert seat crieth from the south unslaken for the dews that once were sweet for the rain that god hath taken tis a children's tale that old shepherds on far hills have told and we reck not of their telling deem not that the sun of gold ever turned his fiery dwelling or beat backward in the sky for the wrongs of man the cry of his ailing tribes assembled to do justly ere they die once men told the tale and trembled fearing god o queen whom thou hast forgotten till thy brow with old blood is dark and daunted and thy brethren even now walk among the stars enchanted 
leader ha friends was that a voice or some dream sound of voices shaketh me as underground gods thunder shuddering hark again and clear it swells upon the wind come forth and hear mistress electra electra a bare sword in her hand comes from the house electra friends some news is brought how hath the battle ended leader i know not there seemed a cry as of men massacred electra i heard it too far off but still i heard leader a distant floating voice ah plainer now electra of argive anguish brother is it thou leader i know not many confused voices cry electra death then for me that answer bids me die leader nay wait we know not yet thy fortune wait electra no messenger from him too late too late leader the message yet will come tis not a thing so light of compass to strike down a king enter a messenger running messenger victory maids of argos victory orestes all that love him list to me hath conquered agamemnon's murderer lies dead o oh, give thanks to god with happy cries electra who art thou i mistrust thee tis a plot messenger thy brother's man look well dost know me not electra friend friend my terror made me not to see thy visage now i know and welcome thee how sayst thou he is dead verily dead my father's murderer messenger shall it be said once more i know again and yet again thy heart would hear aegisthus lieth slain electra ye gods and thou o oh right that seest all art come at last but speak how did he fall how swooped the wing of death i crave to hear messenger forth of this hut we set our faces clear to the world and struck the open chariot road then on toward the pasture lands where stood the great lord of mycenae in a set garden beside a channeled rivulet culling a myrtle garland for his brow he walked but hailed us as we passed how now strangers who are ye of what city sprung and whither bound thessalians answered young orestes to alpheus journeying with gifts to olympian zeus whereat the king this while beseech you tarry and make full the feast upon my hearth we slay a bull here to the nymphs set forth at break of day to-morrow and twill cost you no delay but come and so he gave his hand and led the two men in i must not be gainsaid come to the house ho oh, there set close at hand vats of pure water that the guests may stand at the altar's verge where falls the holy spray then quickly spake orestes by the way we cleansed us in a torrent stream we need no purifying here but if indeed strangers may share thy worship here are we ready o king and swift to follow thee so spoke they in the midst and every thrall laid down the spears they served the king withal and hide him to the work some bore amain the death that some the corbs of hallowed grain or kindled fire and round the fire and in set cauldrons foaming and a festal din filled all the place then took thy mother's lord the ritual grains and o'er the altar poured its dew and prayed o nymphs of rock and mere with many a sacrifice for many a year may i and she who waits at home for me my tindarid queen adore you may it be peace with us always even as now and all ill to mine enemies meaning withal thee and orestes then my master prayed against that prayer but silently and said no word to win once more his fatherland then in the corb aegisthus set his hand took the straight blade cut from the proud bull's head a lock and laid it where the fire was red then while the young men held the bull on high slew it with one clean gash and suddenly turned on thy brother stranger every true thessalian so the story goes can hew a bull's limbs clean and tame a mountain steed take up the steel and show us if indeed rumour speak true right swift orestes took the dorian blade back from his shoulders shook his broached mantle called on pylades to aid him and waved back the thralls with ease heel-wise he held the bull and with one glide bared the white limb 
then stripped the mighty hide from off him swifter than a runner runs his furlongs and laid clean the flank at once aegisthus stooped and lifted up with care the ominous parts and gazed no lobe was there but low strange caves of gall and darkly raised the portal vein boded to him that gazed fell visitations dark as night his brow clouded then spake orestes why art thou cast down so sudden guest he cried there be treasons from whence i know not seeking me of all my foes tis agamemnon's son his hate is on my house like war have done orestes cried thou fearest an exile's plot lord of a city make thy cold heart hot with meat ho fling me a thessalian steel this dorian is too light i will unseal the breast of him he took the heavier blade and clave the bone and there aegisthus stayed the omens in his hand dividing slow this sign from that till while his head bent low up with a leap thy brother flashed the sword then down upon his neck and cleft the cord of brain and spine shuddering the body stood one instant in an agony of blood and gasped and fell the henchmen saw and straight flew to their spears a host of them to set against those twain but there the twain did stand unfaltering each his iron in his hand edge fronting edge till hold orestes calls i come not as in wrath against these walls and mine own people one man righteously i have slain who slew my father it is i the wronged orestes hold and smite me not old housefolk of my father when they caught that name their lances fell and one old man an ancient in the house drew nigh to scan his face and knew him then with one accord they crowned thy brother's temples and outpoured joy and loud songs and hither now he fares to show the head no gorgon that he bears but that aegisthus whom thou hatest yea blood against blood his debt is paid this day he goes off to meet the others electra stands as though stupefied chorus now now thou shalt dance in our dances beloved as a fawn in the night the wind is astir for the glances of thy feet thou art robed with delight he hath conquered he cometh to free us with garlands new won more high than the crowns of alpheus thine own father's son cry cry for the day that is won electra o light of the sun o chariot wheels of flame o earth and night dead night without a name that held me now mine eyes are raised to see and all the doorways of my soul flung free i guess thus dead my father's murderer dead what have i still of wreathing for the head stored in my chambers let it come forth now to bind my brother's and my conqueror's brow some garlands are brought out from the house to electra chorus go gather thy garlands and lay them as a crown on his brow many trust but our feet shall refrain not nor stay them tis the joy that the muses have blessed for our king is returned as from prison the old king to be master again our beloved in justice re-risen with guile he hath slain but cry cry in joyance again there enter from the left orestes and pylades followed by some thralls electra o conqueror come the king that trampled troy knoweth his son orestes come in joy brother and take to bind thy rippling hair my crowns o oh, what are crowns that runners wear for some vain race but thou in battle true hath felled our foe aegisthus him that slew by craft thy sire and mine she crowns orestes and thou no less o friend at need o reared in righteousness take pylades this chaplet from my hand twas half thy battle and may ye two stand thus alway victory crowned before my face she crowns pylades orestes electra first as workers of this grace praise thou the gods and after if thou will praise also me as chosen to fulfil god's work and fates ay tis no more a dream in very deed i come from slaying him thou hast the knowledge clear but lo i bring more also see himself dead attendants bring in the body of aegisthus on a bier wouldst thou fling this lord on the rotting earth for beasts to tear 
or up where all the vultures of the air may glut them pierce and nail him for a sign far off work all thy will now he is thine electra it shames me yet god knows i hunger sore orestes what wouldst thou speak the old fear never more need touch thee electra to let loose upon the dead my hate perchance to rouse on mine own head the sleeping hate of the world orestes no man that lives shall scathe thee by one word electra our city gives quick blame and little love have men for me orestes if aught thou hast unsaid sister be free and speak between this man and us no bar cometh nor stint but the utter rage of war she goes and stands over the body a moment's silence end of part two recording by expatriate in bangor maine of electra by euripides translated by gilbert murray eighteen sixty six to nineteen fifty seven this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part three electra ah me what have i what first flood of hate to loose upon thee what last curse to sate my pain a river of wild words to flow bank high between nothing and yet i know there hath not passed one sun but through the long cold dawns over and over like a song i have said them words held back oh some day yet to flash into thy face would but the fret of ancient fear fall loose and set me free and free i am now and can pay to thee at last the weary debt oh thou didst kill my soul within who wrought thee any ill that thou shouldst make me fatherless i me and this my brother loveless solitary twas thou didst bend my mother to her shame thy weak hand murdered him who led to fame the hosts of hellas thou that never crossed o'er seas to troy god help thee wast thou lost in blindness long ago dreaming somewise she would be true with thee whose sin and lies thyself had tasted in my father's place and then that thou wert happy when thy days were all one pain thou knewest ceaselessly her kiss a thing unclean and she knew thee a lord so little true so dearly won so lost ye both being in falseness one what fortune else had granted she thy curse who marred thee as she loved thee and thou hers and on thy ways thou heardst men whispering lo the queen's husband yonder not the king and then the lie of lies that dim thy brow vaunting that by thy gold thy chattels thou wert something which themselves are nothingness shadows to clasp a moment ere they cease the thing thou art and not the things thou hast abideth yea and bindeth to the last thy burden on thee while all else ill one in sin companioned like a flower or blown flies on the wind away or didst thou find in women women nay peace peace the blind could read thee cruel wast thou in thine hour lord of a great king's house and like a tower firm in thy beauty starting back with a look of loathing ah that girl-like face god grant not that not that but some plain grace of manhood to the man who brings me love a father of straight children that shall move swift on the wings of war so get thee gone not knowing how the great years rolling on have laid thee bare and thy long debt full paid o oh, vaunt not if one step be proudly made in evil that all justice is o'ercast vaunt not ye men of sin ere at the last the thin drawn marge before you glimmereth close and the goal that wheels twixt life and death leader justice is mighty passing dark hath been his sin and dark the payment of his sin electra with a weary sigh turning from the body ah me go some of you bear him from sight 
that when my mother come her eyes may light on nothing nothing till she know the sword the body is borne into the hut pylades goes with it orestes looking along the road stay tis a new thing we have still a word to speak electra what not a rescue from the town thou seest orestes tis my mother comes my own mother that bear me he takes off his crown electra springing as it were to life again and moving where she can see the road straight into the snare ay there she cometh welcome in thy rare chariot all welcome in thy brave array orestes what would we with our mother didst thou say kill her electra turning on him what is it pity dost thou fear to see thy mother's shape orestes twas she that bare my body into life she gave me suck how can i strike her electra strike her as she struck our father orestes to himself brooding phoebus god was all thy mind turned unto darkness electra if thy god be blind shalt thou have light orestes as before thou thou didst bid me kill my mother which is sin electra how brings it ill to thee to raise our father from the dust orestes i was a clean man once shall i be thrust from men's sight blotted with her blood electra thy blot is black as death if him thou succour not orestes who shall do judgment on me when she dies electra who shall do judgment if thy father lies forgotten orestes turning suddenly to electra stay how if some fiend of hell hid in god's likeness spake that oracle electra in god's own house i trow not orestes and i trow it was an evil charge he moves away from her electra almost despairing to fail me now to fail me now a coward o oh, brother no orestes what shall it be then the same stealthy blow electra that slew our father courage thou hast slain aegisthus orestes ay so be it i've ta'en a path of many terrors and shall do deeds horrible tis god will have it so is this the joy of battle or wild woe he goes into the house leader o queen o'er argos throned high o woman sister of the twain god's horsemen stars without a stain whose home is in the deathless sky whose glory in the sea's wild pain toiling to succour men that die long years above us hast thou been godlike for gold and marvelled power ah well may mortal eyes this hour observe thy state all hail o queen enter from the right clytemnestra on a chariot accompanied by richly dressed handmaidens clytemnestra down from the wain ye dames of troy and hold mine arm as i dismount answering electra's thought the spoils and gold of ilion i have sent out of my hall to many shrines these bondwomen are all i keep in mine own house deem'st thou the cost too rich to pay me for the child i lost fair though they be electra nay mother here am i bond likewise yea and homeless to hold high thy royal arm clytemnestra child the war slaves are here thou needst not toil electra what was it but the spear of war drove me forth too mine enemies have sacked my father's house and even as these captives and fatherless made me their prey clytemnestra it was thy father cast his child away a child he might have loved shall i speak out controlling herself nay when a woman once is caught about with evil fame there riseth in her tongue a bitter spirit wrong i know yet wrong or right i charge ye look on the deeds done and if ye needs must hate when all is known hate on what prophet's loathing ere ye know my father gave me to be his tis so but was it his to kill me or to kill the babes i bore yet lo he tricked my will with fables of achilles love he bore to aulis and the dark ship clutching shore he held above the altar flame and smote cool as one reaping through the strained throat my white iphigenia 
had it been to save some falling city leaguered in with foemen to prop up our castle towers and rescue other children that were ours giving one life for many by god's laws i had forgiven all not so because helen was wanton and her master knew no curb for her for that for that he slew my daughter even then with all my wrong no wild beast yet was in me nay for long i never would have killed him but he came at last bringing that damsel with the flame of god about her mad and knowing all and set her in my room and in one wall would hold two queens oh wild are women's eyes and hot her heart i say not otherwise but being thus wild if then her master stray to love far off and cast his own away shall not her will break prison too and wend somewhere to win some other for a friend and then on us the world's curse waxes strong in righteousness the lords of all the wrong must hear no curse i slew him i trod then the only road which led me to the men he hated of the friends of argos whom durst i have sought to aid me to the doom i craved speak if thou wouldst and fear not me if yet thou deemst him slain unrighteously leader thy words be just yet shame their justice brings a woman true of heart should bear all things from him she loves and she who feels it not i cannot reason of her nor speak aught electra remember mother thy last word of grace bidding me speak and fear not to thy face clytemnestra so said i truly child and so say still electra wilt softly hear and after work me ill clytemnestra not so not so i will but pleasure thee electra i answer then and mother this shall be my prayer of opening where hangs the whole would god that he had made thee clean of soul helen and thou o face and form were fair meet for men's praise but sisters twain ye were both things of naught a stain on castor's star and helen slew her honour born afar in wilful ravishment but thou didst slay the highest man of the world and now wilt say twas wrong in justice for thy child laid low at aulis ah who knows thee as i know thou thou who long ere aught of ill was done thy child when agamemnon scarce was gone sate at the looking-glass and tress by tress didst comb the twined gold in loneliness when any wife her lord being far away toils to be fair o oh, blot her out that day as false within what would she with a cheek so bright in strange men's eyes unless she seek some treason none but i thy child could so watch thee in hellas none but i could know thy face of gladness when our enemies were strong and the swift cloud upon thine eyes of troy seemed falling all thy soul keen set praying that he might come no more and yet it was so easy to be true a king was thine not feebler not in anything below aegisthus one whom hellas chose for chief beyond all kings i and god knows how sweet a name in greece after the sin thy sister wrought lay in thy ways to win ill deeds make fair ones shine and turn their two men's eyes enough but say he wronged thee slew by craft thy child what wrong had i done what the babe orestes why didst render not back unto us the children of the dead our father's portion must thou heap thy bed with gold of murdered men to buy to thee thy strange man's arms justice why is not he who cast orestes out cast out again not slain for me whom doubly he hath slain in living death more bitter than of old my sisters nay when all the tale is told of blood for blood what murder shall we make i and orestes for our father's sake clytemnestra ay child i know thy heart from long ago thou hast always loved him best tis oft times so one is her father's daughter and one hot to bear her mother's part i blame thee not yet think not i am happy child nor flown with pride now in the deeds my hand hath done seeing electra unsympathetic she checks herself but thou art all untended comfortless of body and wild of raiment 
and thy stress of travail scarce yet ended woe is me tis all as i have willed it bitterly i've wrought against him to the last blind deep of bitterness woe's me electra fair days to weep when help is not or stay though he lie cold long since there lives another of thy fold far off there might be pity for thy son clytemnestra i dare not yes i fear him tis mine own life and not his comes first and rumour saith his heart yet burneth for his father's death electra why dost thou keep thine husband ever hot against me clytemnestra tis his mood and thou art not so gentle child electra my spirit is too sore howbeit from this day i will no more hate him clytemnestra with a flash of hope o oh, daughter then indeed shall be i promise never more be harsh to thee electra he lieth in my house as twere his own tis that hath made him proud clytemnestra nay art thou flown to strife again so quick child electra well i say no more long have i feared him and always shall fear him even as now clytemnestra nay daughter peace it bringeth little profit speech like this why didst thou call me hither electra it reached thee my word that a man-child is born to me do thou make offering for me for the right i know not as is meet on the tenth night i cannot i have borne no child till now clytemnestra who tended thee tis she should make the vow electra none tended me alone i bear my child clytemnestra what is thy cot so friendless and this wild so far from aid electra who seeks for friendship's sake a beggar's house clytemnestra i will go in and make due worship for thy child the peace-bringer to all thy need i would be minister then to my lord where by the meadow-side he prays the woodland nymphs ye handmaids guide my chariot to the stall and when ye guess the right draws near its end in readiness be here again then to my lord i owe my lord this gladness too the attendants depart clytemnestra left alone proceeds to enter the house electra welcome below my narrow roof but have a care withal a grime of smoke lies deep upon the wall soil not thy robe not far now shall it be the sacrifice god asks of me and thee the bread of death is broken and the knife lifted again that drank the wild bull's life and on his breast ha huh, mother hast slept well aforetime thou shalt lie with him in hell that grace i give to cheer thee on thy road give thou to me peace from my father's blood she follows her mother into the house chorus lo the returns of wrong the wind as a changed thing whispereth overhead of one that of old lay dead in the water lapping long o king o my king a cry in the rafters then rang in the marble dome mercy of god not thou woman to slay me now after the harvest ten now at the last come home o fate shall turn as the tide turn with a doom of tears for the flying heart too fond a doom for the broken bond she hailed him there in his pride home from the perilous years in the heart of his walled lands in the giant's cloud-capped ring herself none other laid the hone to the axe's blade she lifted it in her hands the woman and slew her king woe upon spouse and spouse what so of evil sway held her in that distress even as a lioness breaketh the woodland boughs starving she wrought her way voice of clytemnestra o children children in the name of god slay not your mother a woman did ye hear a cry under the rafters another i weep too yes i down on the mother's heart the child hath trod a death cry from within another god bringeth justice in his own slow tide ay cruel is thy doom but thy deeds done evil thou piteous woman and on one whose sleep was by thy side the door bursts open and orestes and electra come forth in disorder attendants bring out the bodies of clytemnestra and aegisthus leader lo yonder 
in their mother's new spilt gore red garmented and ghastly from the door they reel oh horrible was it agony like this she boded in her last wild cry there lives no seed of man calamitous nor hath lived like the seed of tantalus orestes o dark of the earth o god thou to whom all is plain look on my sin my blood this horror of dead things twain gathered as one they lie slain and the slayer was i i to pay for my pain electra let tear rain upon tear brother but mine is the blame a fire stood over her and out of the fire i came i in my misery and i was the child at her knee mother i named her name chorus alas for fate for the fate of thee o mother mother of misery and misery low hath turned again to slay thee misery and more even in the fruit thy body bore yet hast thou justice justice plain for a sire's blood spilt of yore orestes apollo alas for the hymn thou sangest as hope in mine ear the song was of justice dim but the deed is anguished clear and the gift long nights of fear of blood and of wandering where cometh no greek thing nor sight nor sound on the air yea and beyond beyond roaming what rest is there who shall break bread with me who that is clean shall see and hate not the blood-red hand his mother's murderer electra and i what climb shall hold my evil or roof it above i cried for dancing of old i cried in my heart for love what dancing waiteth me now what love that shall kiss my brow nor blench at the brand thereof chorus back back in the wind and rain thy driven spirit wheeleth again now is thine heart made clean within that was dark of old and murder fraught but lo thy brother what hast thou wrought yea though i love thee what woe what sin on him who willed it not orestes sawst thou her raiment there sister there in the blood she drew it back as she stood she opened her bosom bare she bent her knees to the earth the knees that bent in my birth and i o oh, her hair her hair he breaks into inarticulate weeping chorus o oh, thou didst walk in agony hearing thy mother's cry the cry of wordless wailing well know i electra she stretched her hand to my cheek and there break from her lips a moan mercy my child my own her hand clung to my cheek clung and my arm was weak and the sword fell and was gone chorus unhappy woman could thine eye look on the blood and see her lie thy mother where she turned to die orestes i lifted over mine eyes my mantle blinded i smote as one smiteth a sacrifice and the sword found her throat electra i gave thee the sign and the word i touched with mine hand thy sword leader dire is the grief ye have wrought orestes sister touch her again o veil the body of her shed on her raiment fair and close that death-red stain mother and didst thou bear bear in thy bitter pain to life thy murderer the two kneel over the body of clytemnestra and cover her with raiment electra on her that i loved of yore robe upon robe i cast on her that i hated sore chorus o house that hath hated sore behold thy peace at the last leader ha see above the roof-tree high there shineth is some spirit there of earth or heaven that thin air was never trod by things that die what bodes it now that forth they fare to men reveal it visibly there appears in the air a vision of castor and polydices the mortals kneel or veil their faces castor thou agamemnon's son give ear tis we castor and polydices call to thee god's horsemen and thy mother's brethren twain an argive ship spent with the toiling main we bore but now to peace and here with all being come have seen thy mother's bloody fall our sisters righteous is her doom this day but not thy deed and phoebus phoebus nay 
he is my lord therefore i hold my peace yet though in light he dwell no light was this he showed to thee but darkness which do thou endure as man must chafing not and now fare forth where zeus and fate have laid thy life the maid electra thou shalt give for wife to pylades then turn thy head and flee from argos land tis never more for thee to tread this earth where thy dead mother lies and lo in the air her spirit's bloodhound eyes most horrible yet godlike hard at heel following shall scourge thee as a burning wheel speed maddened seek thou straight athena's land and round her awful image clasp thine hand praying and she will fence them back though hot with flickering serpents that they touch thee not holding above thy brow her gorgon shield there is a hill in athens ares field where first for that first death by ares done an holler hotheus poseidon's son who wronged his daughter the great gods of yore held judgment and true judgments evermore flow from that hill trusted of man and god there shalt thou stand arraigned of this blood and of those judges half shall lay on thee death and half pardon so shalt thou go free for phoebus in that hour who bade thee shed thy mother's blood shall take on his own head the stain thereof and ever from that strife the law shall hold that when for death or life of one pursued men's voices equal stand then mercy conquereth but for thee the band of spirits dread down down in very wrath shall sink beside that hill making their path through a dim chasm the which shall i be trod by reverent feet where men may speak with god but thou forgotten and far off shalt dwell by great alpheus waters in a dell of arcady where that grey wolf god's wall stands holy and thy dwelling men shall call orestes town so much to thee be spoke but this dead man aegisthus all the folk shall bear to burial in a high green grave of argos for thy mother she shall have her tomb from menelaus who hath come this day at last to argos bearing home helen from egypt comes she and the hall of proteus and in troy hath ne'er at all set foot twas but a wraith of helen sent by zeus to make much wrath and ravishment so forth for home bearing the virgin bride let pylades make speed and lead beside thy once named brother and with golden store establish his house far off on focus shore up gird thee now to the steep isthmian way seeking athena's blessed rock one day thy doom of blood fulfilled and this long stress of penance past thou shalt have happiness leader looking up is it for us o seed of zeus to speak and hear your words again castor speak of this blood ye bear no stain electra i also sons of tyndareus my kinsmen may my word be said castor speak on apollo's head we lay the bloody doings of this day leader ye gods ye brethren of the dead why held ye not the deathly herd of carries back from off this home castor there came but that which needs must come by ancient fate and that dark word that rang from phoebus in his mood electra and what should phoebus seek with me or all god's oracles that be that i must bear my mother's blood castor thy hand was as thy brother's hand thy doom shall be as his one stain from dim forefathers on the twain lighting hath sapped your hearts as sand orestes who has never raised his hand nor spoken to the gods after so long sister to see and hold thee and then part then part by all that chained thee to my heart forsaken and forsaking thee castor husband and house are hers she bears no bitter judgment save to go exiled from argos electra and what woe what tears are like an exile's tears orestes exiled and more am i impure a murderer in a stranger's hand castor fear not there dwells in palace land all holiness till then endure orestes and electra embrace orestes i closer clasp my body well and let thy sorrow loose and shed as o'er the grave of one new dead dead evermore 
thy last farewell a sound of weeping castor alas what would ye for that cry ourselves and all the sons of heaven have pity yea our peace is riven by the strange pain of these that die orestes no more to see thee electra nor thy breath be near my face orestes ah so it ends electra farewell dear argos all ye friends farewell orestes o faithful unto death thou goest electra ay i pass from you soft-eyed at last orestes go pylades and god go with you wed in peace my tall electra and be true electra and pylades depart to the left castor their troth shall fill their hearts but on dread feet are near thee hounds of prey snake-handed midnight visage yea and bitter pains their fruit be gone orestes departs to the right but hark the far sicilian sea calls and a noise of men and ships that labour sunken to the lips in bitter billows forth go we through the long leagues of fiery blue with saving not to souls unshriven but whoso in his life hath striven to love things holy and be true through toil and storm we guard him we save and he shall not die therefore o praise the lying man no more nor with oath-breakers sail the sea farewell ye walkers on the shore of death a god hath counselled ye castor and polydikes disappear chorus farewell farewell but he who can so fair and stumbleth not on mischief anywhere blessed on earth is he End of part three recording by expatriate in Bangor, Maine. End of Electra by Euripides, translated by Gilbert Murray, eighteen sixty six to nineteen fifty seven.